I just got back from SHOT Show 2024. We still have video content running at TFB TV Showtime. That's where we're running all of our videos this year, so go over to Showtime. You guys love these compilation videos where I go over what I think were the best guns of SHOT Show. So we're going to start with my favorite category, the top five pistols of SHOT Show 2024. Yes, my voice sounds like this because I got drunk a whole lot in Las Vegas. Bear with me. SHOT Show 2024, moderately strong pistol year, so much so I actually had seven on my list, honorable mention to the Glock 49, which I'm only not including because I kind of consider it to be a 2023 release. And I think maybe the Canic Combat Master deserves an honorable mention as a budget competition gun with some involvement from Taron Butler in a gun that I think costs less than a thousand bucks. Starting off with number five, the Smith & Wesson Ultimate Carry Airweight Revolver Series. A lot of the blog guys, that is the guys from TFB, were impressed with this because Lipsy's basically custom ordered a bunch of Smith & Wesson Airweight Revolvers with a lot of the features that many people upgrade out of the box. And for less than a $240 upcharge over MSRP, you get an outstanding trigger job, Novak night sights, G10 flat boot grips, fully shredded ejector rod, chamfered charge holes, the S&W endurance package, including titanium internal pins. Oh yeah, and these are no lock guns too. And if you know, you know. For everyone who thought these were overpriced, this is an outstanding, unbelievable value for the price of a child's meal at the Venetian, at least for the upcharge. Is this a boomer take? Possibly. But I'll chamfer your charge holes if you talk shit on the air weight. I still love tossing high-class hobo deterrent in my pocket to run up to the bodega for Montucky cold snacks. And as I've proven before, you can be five to the face accurate from a jacket pocket with a revolver, which won't work for a semi. Anyways... With these being just $240 price premium over the standard version of the air weights, there's literally no reason to not just buy one of these instead of your standard out-of-the-box air weight. Number four, the controversy slot. This pick is only controversial because I hate you whiny ass motherfuckers ruining everything that I love. I'm going with the Zev OZ9SC. Honestly, this was my favorite handgun of the show, but I'm always surprised by TFB TV comments. Glock could release a goddamn pocket lawgiver and you guys will find some way, some reason to shit all over it. And I'm kidding, of course. I don't hate you guys. Quite the opposite. I'm not trying to encourage you here, but I do enjoy it a bit when you guys go hard in the comments. Look, if somebody said to me, James, what is the perfect carry gun in the year of our Lord 2024? I would say a Glock 43X with a modular frame, the ability to use 10 round, 12 round, 15 round, 17 round, SIG P365 magazines and frames. That's basically what Zev is doing here. I don't even remember how much it cost. $2,000 or something. I'll, I'll buy it. I mean, I don't give a shit. F it, make it $4,000. I just need to do like what one simply safe ad to get that amount of money this looks like my ideal carry gun optics ready great trigger modular possibly possibly the ability to use p365 mags and glock 43x uppers on the dl this was probably my number one pick possibly of the entire show but i'm putting it at number four because i'm scared of you guys ass blasting me if i put it any higher Number three, the PX4 Compact Carry 2. Take your pick from the Beretta stock version or the Langdon tactical version. Ernest Langdon deserves a lot of credit for keeping the PX4 not only afloat, but thriving just when it seemed like everyone had forgotten about it. A pistol that went overlooked for whatever reason. The PX4 has been proven by Ernest as one of the most durable, reliable, and best shooting compact hammer-fired handguns. The Compact Carry 2 will include an extended mag release, low-profile slide release, wraparound grip tape, better sights, a lighter double-action trigger pull, and a bobbed hammer, decock-only low-profile levers, gray Cerakote. I'd go over the Langdon version, but I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. You can basically do whatever you want with the LTT PX4 and Big Earn will give your wallet the big burn. I'd probably just settle for the RDO cut and the LTT trigger, call it a day with an outstanding PX4 Compact Carry 2. Number two, the Daniel Defense H9. This might have been the most newsworthy release of the show. A lot of industry insiders were well aware that Daniel Defense purchased the Hudson H9s intellectual property about four years ago. Hudson went under, so we waited for this day for a long time. And so did Daniel Defense, because they had to spend a long, 
long time perfecting the Hudson design. In fact, there's only one interchangeable part between the original Hudson H9 and the Daniel Defense version. That's how much they revamped this gun. More or less, the Daniel H9 is a low bore axis striker fired handgun with an aluminum frame and a 1911 style trigger. It's also about as thick as most micro compacts, like an inch thick. So it's going to be concealable. We got to shoot it in the rain at the range and speak to the engineers about it. They shot nearly 1 million rounds of 9mm perfecting this gun and they took their time making sure that it would be a viable platform. Watch my video on the TFB TV main channel if you want the full story on that. And don't you dare call me a pussy for picking this cat as the number one handgun from SHOT Show 2024. You like that, right? I didn't pick it, you did. As of the time I'm recording this video, the new Beretta 30X is the most viewed video on TFB TV Showtime for SHOT Show 2024, and I think for good reason, mainly because it's fun. But there's still some practical use here, essentially. Beretta took the old Bobcat, Tomcat designs, and a little bit like the Hudson, they re-engineered the guns to be more reliable, more modernized, all the while maintaining that same Italian drip that these Beretta guns drown in. It's not just fun and stylish, but there are some practical advantages. Sure, it's just 32 ACP, which for some reason has its own subreddit, did you know this, called the One True Caliber, probably full of handlebar mustachioed, tweed-wearing, calcium-deficient osteo persons, but if it weren't a larger caliber, the whole gimmick wouldn't work. First of all, this is a true pocket gun. Make it bigger, it's not a pocket gun anymore. It literally fits in your pocket. Second, low recoil. Third, you don't need to rack the slide to charge it, so this is great for moms and Harry Potter fans. And remember, this is the caliber that started World War I, so it's nothing to scoff at. See, this is what I'm talking about. Who needs new designs when you can take already great designs and make them better. That's what Beretta and Daniel Defense did at this show. I applaud them. They had two of the best and most popular guns at SHOT. Thank you guys so much for watching TFB TV Showtime. Make sure to go over there and subscribe. Stay tuned to my personal channel here. Make sure to subscribe because I'm bringing you more SHOT show, montage, rundown thing, top five list, whatever, in the next few days. Thanks for watching. Take care.